I try to make a graceful entrance, and I guess I, I accomplished that. <laughs> Good morning and welcome to Grand Rapids First United Methodist Church. We are certainly delighted that you have joined us for our in-person worship, as well as if you're joining us virtually, we welcome you uh, either way. We are worshiping, um, if you're worshiping with us in the sanctuary today, a couple of things to note. Uh, please wear your mask covering your mouth and nose. We continue to mask so that all may feel welcome and safe in worship, especially those who are unable to receive the vaccine. On your way in, you may have noticed uh, our offering plates at the back center table or at our ramp entrance. To limit germ spread, you're invited to place your morning offering in the plate or in the box on your way out, or you're also able to give electronically online through the website. With the restart of our in-person worship, we are looking for more ushers and greeters to serve on Sunday mornings. If you would like to be an usher or a greeter, please email info at grfumc.org to join our team. Are you new to First United Methodist Church or considering becoming a member? We invite you to join Pastor Bob today after worship for a membership exploration class downstairs in the fellowship hall immediately following worship. Also today, after worship, our Stephen Ministry team, a caregiving ministry, will be hosting an informal meeting in the upper room. If you're unable to attend, there will be a second opportunity over Zoom. Um, you can e e if you want more information on that Zoom meeting that will most likely take place in, in September at info at grfumc.org for more details. Today at 518, you're invited to join the movement. The movement are um, inclusive community seeking and creating dynamic change um, community is going to be partnering with In Vivo today and that worship service will be over at Second Congregational Church at 518. We will not be meeting here for worship. Lego Bible stories for kids will not take place today but will return next week after worship so you can enjoy lemonade on the lawn after worship today instead. Children's ministry teacher and volunteer recruitment starts this week. Do you enjoy sharing stories and wondering about God alongside children? Please join us. Um, and for more information, you can email Audrey K at grfumc to start a conversation about becoming a leader in our children's ministry area. Also, we have two children's ministry positions open. Um, if you are at least 18 years old and you have experience working with one, young children, we invite you to apply. You can just um, look at our website, grfumc.org backslash employment to read more about that job opportunity. Elaine Young, where are you? There you are, sitting right down in front where you've been for many years. On Wednesday, Elaine will be turning 98 years old. If you're new, maybe you haven't met Elaine. So Elaine, why don't you just raise your hand so we can see you down front there. There she is. As we settle into our worship time, I invite you to keep the following individuals and families in your prayers. For Don, for Kathy, for Paul, for Pat, for Lois, for Rick, for Carl, for Peggy, and for Connie as well as we continue to keep in our prayers our sister church in Cuba, and our prayers are with the family and friends of Mike who was killed in the Heartside community last night. As we settle into worship, may the spirit move as it moves in this place and be among us.
Good morning. I invite you to join with me in our call to worship. Welcome to all who have come to worship in search of something. We have come to seek the living God. Happy are those who follow the path toward God, with God's best plan for creation to live in community. We do not walk the path Godward alone. Today, may we seek and find the presence of God in our lives. With faith and hope, let us worship God. Let us pray. God of love, we give thanks for your presence that is with us always and the hope you provide for us in times of uncertainty and confusion. Send your Holy Spirit to teach, encourage, and inspire us. Renew us in mind, body, and spirit that we may serve as ambassadors for Christ in our world. Teach us to be people who pray, worship, rest, learn, break bread, share life, seek justice, and grow in the spirit. As we gather in worship this day, unite us in prayer and send us forth in mission so that we and the whole creation might be restored and renewed through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins 
as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. You may be seated. Our first reading is Psalm 16. Protect me, God, because I take refuge in you. I say to the Lord, you are my Lord. Apart from you, I have nothing good. Now as for the holy ones in the land, the magnificent ones that I was so happy about, let their suffering increase because they hurried after a different God. I won't participate in their blood offerings. I won't let their names cross my lips. You, Lord, are my portion, my cup. You control my destiny. The proper li property lines have fallen beautifully for me. Yes, I have a lovely home. I will bless the Lord who advises me. Even at night I am instructed in the depths of my mind. I always put the Lord in front of me. I will not stumble because God is on my right side. That's why my heart celebrates and my mood is joyous. Yes, my whole body will rest in safety because you won't abandon my life to the grave. You won't let your faithful followers see the pit. You teach me the way of life. In your presence is total celebration. Beautiful things are always in your right hand. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. At this time, I would invite any children to come forward for the children's moments with Pastor Tim. Good morning. Good morning. How's everyone today? Good, good, good. So there is uh, a song that I hope you can help me with. It goes like this. Jesus loves me, this I know. Do you know that one? You know that one when you were four? I think I... When you were three? Do we have anybody who was younger? So yeah, we learned that song. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. What, what do you know about Jesus? What can you tell me about Jesus that you know? Yeah, what do you know? He was God's son. Yeah, he was born of Mary. He's God's son. What else do we know about Jesus? We know that he loves us, right? That's what the, sh the song tells us, and that's what the Bible tells us too. So this song that, that we, we learn also tells us about um, how God cares for us. So God loves us in Jesus. Do we know anything else about Jesus? I think that um, I'm kind of a sideshow here. And that's okay. I, I, that's, that's good. That's good. I, I think this area is so great because it gives us some, a lot of activity to, to work with and play with and create. And I think that's what God invites us to do each and every day, to create something out of what we're given. And so we know that we are loved by God, and we know that Jesus loves us very much. And look at that. This is what happens every day, right? That's what I thought. It's so beautiful. It's so beautiful. All right, let us pray. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for children who teach us how to create, who teach us how to love. You do the same each and every day. You love us as we are, and you invite us to create to create kindness, to create goodness, to create love, as you teach us each and every day through stories in the Bible and through stories of life. Amen. Keep creating, okay?
Good morning. I ask you to hear a word from the Lord from both Jeremiah and Matthew. From Jeremiah. This is what the Lord says. Stop at the crossroads and look around. Ask for the godly way and then walk in it. Travel its path and you will find rest for your souls. And then from Matthew chapter 16. Jesus said to his disciples, if any of you wants to be my follower, you must turn from selfish ways and take up your cross and follow me. If you try to hang on to your life, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for my sake, you will save it. What do you benefit if you gain the whole world but lose your own soul? Is anything worth more than your soul? And then some quotes that I wish to share with you as we begin our thinking together. The first from John Maxwell, who said, life is a matter of choices, and every choice we make makes us. Elizabeth Kubler-Ross, I believe that we are solely responsible for our choices and we have to accept the consequences of every deed, word, and thought throughout our lifetime. And then from that famous author, Anonymous, everything in your life is a reflection of the choices you have made. If you want different results, make different choices. And finally, from Nelson Mandela. May your choices reflect your hopes and not your fears. Will you pray with me? In the course of our busy lives, Almighty God, you grant us times of rest and spiritual refreshment. Grant that we may use such times as these to perceive the way in which you are calling to us, and then grant to us the strength and the courage to pursue those things until we accomplish them. In these moments of prayerful listening and thinking and planning, we ask that you will open our eyes, open our ears, open our minds, that we can discover more completely who you are and what you are calling us to be and to do. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. The freedom of choice is considered by many to be an American virtue. People who live and work in any democratic society similar to ours they all protect and defend their right to choose. Every day, every day, all of us make hundreds of choices. According to researchers at Cornell University, the average person makes over 200 decisions daily about their food choices. Think of that. I find it hard to believe, but according to those same researchers, the average adult makes somewhere around 30,000 remotely conscious decisions every day. Every decision, every decision carries with it consequences. Decisions are often categorized by being excellent or good or bad or destructive or a host of other appropriate descriptors. 
decision making is an art. It is not a science. There are times when the choices that are made seemingly are ill-advised, yet some of those ill-advised decisions, ill-advised choices that we make turn out to be very positive. There are other times when decisions that seem straightforward, perhaps even obvious, end up having the worst possible outcomes imaginable. As John Maxwell so succinctly stated, life is a matter of choices, and every choice we make makes us. I think it's fair to add three words to the end of John Maxwell's quote. What I'd like to add is that every choice we make makes us or breaks us. While it perhaps sounds dramatic, I believe it to be true. There is no freedom of choice without accepting the enormity of being responsible for those choices. On Wednesday of this past week, I received a phone call from the unit coordinator of the assisted living unit where my father resides in Springfield, Missouri. She told me that my 93-year-old father has now tested positive for COVID-19. He is isolated, but currently only facing two symptoms, a runny nose and extraordinary tiredness. If you have kept up with the news reports, you will know that Springfield Branson area in southwest Missouri is one of the hot spots in the United States for the Delta virus. Delta variant of the coronavirus. The city of Springfield, with a population of approximately 170,000 residents, has been averaging 400 positive tests daily for the last two weeks. The numbers of positivity have been on the rise for several months there, much like it has been in Florida and Texas. The critical care unit, units at the two major medical centers in Springfield are at maximum capacity with over 100 patients on ventilators in each of the two hospitals. Medical personnel are overwhelmed. They have exhausted their supply of ventilators. As of yesterday, the Springfield area was declared a federal medical crisis, with the CDC sending tents and staff and many, many dollars to southwest Missouri. It is a serious situation. Fortunately, my father received both of his vaccine shots in late January and February. He has not been out of the assisted living facility since I took him to an emergency room visit in mid-November of 2020. Which means that it is likely that caregivers or a visitor that visited the assisted living residents brought the virus in. Which leads me back to the primary topic for today, which is making choices. Now the greater context is that Springfield is often referred to as the holy city. And I say that with tongue in cheek. There are evangelical Christian colleges and universities all throughout Springfield, just as there are large, very large evangelical churches 
with over 15 churches that have several thousand worshipers attending on any given Sunday morning. The messages promoted by pastors and leaders of those churches since the beginning of 2021 when the vaccine was available has been don't bother being vaccinated. God will take care of us. The virus and the vaccine are a hoax, they promoted. Pastors took the erroneous posture of declaring that masks are not needed, that social distancing in their churches were not either recommended or required, with the encouragement for congregants to simply live their life as though there is no pandemic. The message has been loud and clear. Everyone is free to do what they want and to make any and all choices that are only about the individual and their personal conviction, which makes little or no sense, actually, in those environments because they don't apply the same thing when they talk about drinking or smoking or divorce or abortion or the host of other things that they hold people accountable for. The consequences are that people who choose to ignore medical science and have made the focus about their right to choose are now getting ill and many are dying, which at this stage of development in our journey through this coronavirus is completely avoidable. Regret and grief is setting in, and it's sad. A few of those large church pastors have come down with the COVID-19 virus. And the song they are singing today is different than the song they sang six months ago. Since only 40% of the population of the city has been vaccinated, pastors and church leaders are finally listening to healthcare professionals and now opening clinics in their churches to get people vaccinated. Six months late. Which leads me to a series of questions, questions that I think you ought to ask yourself, questions that are worth pondering. Why? Why has it taken so long for people of faith to lead with responsibility? What is it that has hindered spiritual leaders from making wise and responsible decisions for the greater good of their people? What is it? What is it about Christian decision making that has become so focused on the political climate of the day rather than being lovingly proactive with responsible research consultation, conversation, reason, and making every choice based on the greater good. What has happened to the fundamental Christian value of being attentive to the needs of others and making decisions based on what is best for community? You see, my friends, if we are to fulfill the call of Jesus to be salt and light, then our influence in our world begins with every single choice we make. Every choice, every decision is light or it is salt. These last several months, I have found my way back to the prophet Jeremiah. And I have to tell you, there 
I have found a great deal of strength and courage in reading Jeremiah once more. We don't have to read very far into the book of Jeremiah to discover that the prop prophet was a faithful servant of God. Jeremiah loved God and he loved the people that he was called to serve. Jeremiah was transparent with the people because he was emotionally connected and engaged with them. As a spiritual leader, Jeremiah felt great compassion for the people of Israel and was concerned about their welfare and their safety. He wanted the very best for his people. He called them back to love and serve the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The context of the verse that I shared with you a few moments ago was a gut-wrenching time in the life of Jeremiah because he had delivered what he felt to be the message of God to the people, reminding them of how God's love and mercy and grace had been extended to them for generations. But the people continued to ignore the call. The people rebelled against God and they would not listen to God's guidance through the voice of the prophet. Jeremiah pleaded with the people. He asked them, please make different choices. And so with exasperation, Jeremiah tried to get the people's attention one more time. He invited them to stop at the crossroads and look around. Ask for the godly way to be shown to you and then follow that path. And if you can walk the path, you will find rest for your souls. Jeremiah was, in short, challenging the people to rethink the choices they were making. He instructed the people to make godly choices, to walk the pathway of God. For it was there, he said, you will find rest for your soul. Now understand, understand the way of God is not trouble free, but it is the best way to peace. Peace in the soul. I don't know if any of you saw it, but in this morning's New York Times, there was a headline. It said, America is at the crossroad with the surge of the virus. Do you hear the connection? Standing at a crossroad. Standing at a crossroad. Which way are we going to choose? Truth is, we are not human beings on a spiritual journey. We are spiritual beings on a human journey. Christian decision-making is soul-centered work. It is life-altering and important work, both for ourselves and those that we know and love. Friends, I may be preaching to the choir today. I don't know, because we don't know who's been vaccinated and who hasn't been vaccinated. But I believe that now is the season, we're in the season, when responsible choices must be made by the people of faith in order to be a beacon of light in the world. We do not have options. My, how we need God's guidance and wisdom. My, how we need God's strength and courage. My, how we need the Spirit's discernment to be both gift and companion as we make the decisions that are purposeful and responsible. Ask for the godly way to be shown to you and then follow 
that path. And if you can walk that path, you will find rest for your soul. Thanks be to God. Amen. still my soul. The Lord is on our side. In the chaos of this time, we find and need a stillness. A stillness that goes beyond just sitting, but also choosing to listen to listen to the ways that God chooses. God makes choices as we do, and God chooses us each day by giving us and gifting us with a new beginning. As we take time to be in prayer together, let us pray for this new beginning, this new day, this new dawning. Let us pray. Gracious God of new beginnings, you chose to gift us with a rising sun. 
an opportunity to share your goodness and grace. And in that divine sharing, you gift us with freedom. Freedom that we sometimes don't know what to do with. But in your way and in your love, you see no other way. As we continue to make choices, you do as well. And as you so chose to do, you gifted us with Jesus. And out of your love, showed us a new beginning. A new way to live and to turn to one another in the world. And through Jesus' teaching, taught us how to choose justice over our own way. To choose love over hate. to follow, not our own ways, but to follow in your way, so that your will may be made known in the world. And so today we continue to choose you, in your way not only to be drawn together in community, to listen and to learn and to sing together and to create, but to also to find your way in the world. So help us as we each and every day find ways in our own lives to choose you, to listen and to be still long enough to rethink not my way but your way. And in our thinking, may we be transformed by the heart of your love. Continue to be with us in our journey from this place, O oh God, and into our week as we try to make our way through all that is going on around us. May we see the glimpses of your choosing, the laughter of children, the creation that is in full bloom the joy of the struggle of working for what is right. And to also listen to what is going on around us right here in our own community and help us to find ways to lead through our actions. Hear us as we live, O oh God, and help us to hear you as you connect with us. We pray all this in the name of Jesus. Amen.
Thank you for joining with us in worship this morning. We trust that something during the course of our worship service has spoken to you or inspired you to do more for God's kingdom. You are someone who carries a piece of good news into the world. Every decision that you make, every single one, is a representation of the God that is at work in you. So go from this place renewed in your spirit, eager and ready to serve Christ in all you do say and think. Thanks be to God. Amen. Hey, Keith. 